sorry about that um, the voice did not get recorded for the former part here so but getting back here so real quick review here um, just for anybody because I didn't record the voice these are our numbers here welcome to Sarah from the Innobay team from Saudi Arabia we're getting the Saudi Arabian team online for the 3d printer the biggest 3d printer in the world a hundred 3d printers gonna be built in a day and following up with so that's on the slide here the Saudis are coming for a hundred 3d printer builds in one day followed by a build of the CNC torch table and tractor in December is that possible yes it is so this, that's what we're working on. All those people are applying right now. I'm interviewing a bunch of those people from Saudi Arabia, from the Innobay. It's an organization of makers in the Middle East, North Africa region, MENA region. So that's that. Um, Brick Press, we're going to get a team going. Uh, CB Press, workshop on the 25th of August, 3D printer workshop on the 12th. Fill in, uh, so can we fill in on the filament maker? What is the status of that? Because... Uh, as I said, that's a critical, critical technology uh, for low-cost printing. Otherwise, you can't afford to... I mean, 3D printing filament is, is 20 bucks a kilogram. So, outside of little, little tiny things, you can't print any bigger stuff like structure, any structural construction stuff. Like glazing, fence posts, lumber, plastic lumber or whatever, piping for your... like all your... PV, replacement of PVC pipes for your plumbing and all that. You can do that on a 3D printer, but it's too expensive. We've got to do our own filament maker. Okay, um, can I can I get a report here, please, on the filament maker before we go further? Wikilink, working doc. Uh, quick, so Abe, maybe, or Roberto, uh, what's the latest on the CAD status? And maybe if you can share your screen. Or maybe we'll just wait for you. Please, please uh, do type that in. Hello. Yeah, uh, yeah, you want to... You wanna... Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 go ahead. Uh-oh. Yeah. Okay, the... I think it's breaking up a little bit. Um, I can hear you I'll well. Try. I think we're coming along with the, uh, the parts library. Uh, it's mainly what I've uh, been working on. The it, It's pretty well filled out. I think we have a lot of questions about certain stuff and there are part designs but we're working it out there's a lot of discussion about how to uh, keep things simplified and um, just generally how to get the parts uh, so we can assemble them easier and not have too much uh, large file size and things like that uh, thinking about how to represent the wiring and things like that mm -hmm. uh, color color coding I guess is a big uh, question for a bunch of the different parts and yeah. uh, as well as maybe for doing some kind of representation for wire connections. I'm thinking about that. But I think most of the part library is filling out okay. Um, so yeah, I made some notes. There, there was a few things that were missing that I found earlier in the week and uh, uh, corrected a couple things. Um, continuing on the CAD, and I'm still figuring out some stuff in free CAD. But um, I think most of the parts... And I, I, major parts are done and we're working on some of the little stuff and I think Murray is getting filled out and I think there are some some spots that haven't got work on and we'll just move on to the, those next because they're assigned to people and they haven't gotten work done on those yet so we'll just kind of break those up I think and and finish those yeah okay uh, can I get any screenshot of the latest and the greatest on the uh filament maker overall CAD Roberto do you have do you have something like that that you can share the screen on or or you're not on a you're on a smartphone yes uh, I, I can put in the chat yeah yeah let me uh, second I'm trying to look at your log here filament extruder assembly from Saturday, July 15th, which is quite recent. That's yes, yes, yes. very, very nice and recent. So let's take a look at all that we have there. Um, let's let's just uh, boot up FreeCAD to see what the status of that is. But the idea there was that the overall file should have placeholders for every single little part. It would be like our master master CAD file, so we can really 
understand a machine closely. One thing that FreeCAD can do, and I don't know the status of it, is if you have a part tree, like look at this, like you've got, um, oh, very nice, look at that, okay. That's that's all coming together, and what I'm seeing, oh, look at that. Oh, there we go, sorry about that. Oh. Let me share my screen. Yeah, you guys got a scream. I, I thought I was... Ah. I thought I was sharing already. Not. Okay. Look at this, people. This is looking great. Um, look at that. Uh, so what what's nice about this is I'm seeing little parts come in. Like, look at those little bolts. I like that. Little bolts. Little switch. Um... How detailed are we here? You know, what's underneath there? Um, yeah. Do we have anything underneath there? Oh, look at that. There's some electrical. You peel the layers there. Some electrical components. Very nice. Um, what else? I know... Uh, yeah. Okay. It's pretty good. So there's a bunch of, bunch of parts. Um, that's probably representing the auger there definitely that's the shaft coupler yeah yeah I mean quite good um, all coming together more or less um, what would you estimate would be the status of this um, like do we have anything comparable to this on the the winder part or no that was IO and IO reported he didn't get a chance to do much this week for other emergencies um, so that's, you know, that's, that's pretty good. One comment, uh, before I ask about the second part is if you look at the, look at this, uh, whole part tree, right? What would be very nice in order to automate the, the CAD workflow would be extending FreeCAD's capacity. I know FreeCAD has got some modules here that are spreadsheets and what would be very useful, and this is Python, right? So what would be useful is when we uh, have the part tree, we can put data in a part tree or just like automatically extract a bill of materials from the part tree. How useful would that be? That would be most amazing. Uh, right now we're using Google Spreadsheets, but imagine some kind of a script within FreeCAD that can get you straight from so so that that way that way that means we are focusing on FreeCAD as our super powerful tool that will generate those spreadsheets that we are now generating manually that would be nice so I could definitely see that as a future opportunity where in the part tree we have good descriptions and potentially even links like somewhere we put some meta metadata links um, I don't know if you've like in the if you look at the property like the the properties the the information about that part like maybe there's there's a way to put in more text like for example with a link so then you can go to the complete CAD file and you're picking off uh, your bill of materials and shopping list off the actual CAD file that's just a thought but but very useful for for the future work um, of what we have with uh, the power of FreeCAD, so that's good. Now, what is? Um, do we have any updates on the status of the um, the winder part? No, no, I I don't think so, right? Because I O was was gonna do that. Any comment on that, Christian? You you're saying basic structure on the on the winder? No, the Python, B-O-M, sorry. Oh, okay. Well, I think what we should do is, um, yeah, let's not put that on the plate right now as we've got some other po possibilities or other other priorities. But we do want to definitely put it into our workflow. Yeah, I mean, so so the real priorities right now are brick press um, and, and finishing up the filament extruder 
and getting the torch table up and running. This is a full full pack here. I'm 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 strapped for time, uh, so I I can't really do that unless Christian, you want to just start drawing up a if you understand FreeCAD well enough to propose a basic strategy for how that would happen because we got to scratch our head a little bit and think about what the um, design of such a piece of software would look like and, and how best to do it but definitely something something very very important that, that we can definitely add in the future okay um, so let's see let me let me just go back into this and uh, Abe anything more to add on, on this here like in terms of um, in terms of getting that completed what are we estimating for uh, how much effort is still required? Uh, that, that's a good question. How much how much time do we think we can we still would need uh, given who we have working on this? Uh, looking at the CAD assembly you just showed, I think that it's mostly close on the large stuff and the assemblies are, I mean, he's looking pretty complete there. I don't know if all the new detailed stuff is in there. Some of those, um, may not be, even be the most up-to-date parts, but mm -hmm. th there were some parts that are actually really detailed. I think it was it, um, some parts with the, the wires and things like that, and I think we need to figure out maybe a little more detail on how those will be shown or represented there, because we can't, it's kind of hard to draw a lot of wire like that, and he did a really detailed job uh, with some of the wiring parts on that, and actually sometimes simpler of trying to stick to a simpler thing the best I can just to keep it small whatever is most effective but um, I think display wires and stuff easier or where do labels, I see one of those files uh, where we can there's different ways to do labels where can I see one of the files with the with the with the wires, would that be Israel or uh, Israel drew some parts? I think, it, yeah, it was I'm sure it was Israel drew the uh, thermal couple and the uh, I think another bit of wiring for that. Those parts are uh, go mostly on the end of the device. They're in the thermal components, I guess, and they get. They're kind of underneath, so I guess they don't have to display well, but we'll figure out how to put them in there okay. the right way, I think. And okay. Um, the let's other see. wiring stuff I've been trying to figure out because it's it's complicated to draw the wiring, take up a lot of space, uh, memory-wise, and add a lot of complexity, so... Uh, other parts first plus I thought we should go down the last meeting in more order that way we don't get mistakes propagated into the assemblies yeah so I reviewed a lot of of the documents looking for errors and things this week but uh, while well, I'm trying to also do certain aspects of the CAD uh, um, Dixon uh, was worried about not understanding the file simplification. I would say that I, I had to read the document thoroughly myself, and I think I understand that better now. And I don't think it's too big of a deal to worry about. File simplification is mostly just using primitive parts where you can and then deleting extra stuff later. So yeah, uh, it, it's not even obstruction, really. Right. Doing a simplification, removing things later, and uploading all the versions so the more detailed and less detailed versions are in place. And then the general workflow being we import individual files into the master document. Talking about this master document here, uh, if we were to draw up a bill of materials for the extruder part, what percentage of, you know, if you, if you actually have a representation for each single part down to connectors, and wires like for example underneath with some of the electronics um, what percentage would you estimate of the parts like if I went into this and actually studied it and said okay I'm gonna actually buy these parts what percentage of the parts are represented in this one 
What would you estimate? Because then checking that okay. against the master the master uh, master index, right? How much of the master index is represented? Um, okay, you broke up a little on my end, but I think I understand you're asking uh, how kind of generally far along you think we are. I think that most of the major stuff is done. Some of the detailed stuff will take a little longer, but I don't think it'll take us too many more hours, depending on how many people are uh, actively working on Emily. Um, I, I thought we were kind of going to assemble the modules in sections, and I don't know how much that's done. I guess Roberto, uh, Roberto's just been assembling everything that he can find as people upload it into this single uh, complete uh, file, but I think we kind of want um, I think we're going to assemble the, each person let assemble their module kind of as they finish that but I don't know how, that may not be immediately useful either unless um, it's kind of the, the order of the actual physical assembly uh, there was some discussion about that because we wanted to get the right parts in the right modules so that it kind of matched reality, uh, you know, the way that you would actually physically put it together in a, uh, a workshop or something like that. And some of the parts decided, I think, maybe the motor or something like that should be in a different module. Yeah. Okay, so Roberto is talking about a, he's doing a nice little post on the network that opens sourceecology.org. That's a good one. I like it. I like the flavor of that, and I'm going to respond to that more fully. That's just from yesterday. But there are he's raising up some very important points that we should all be on the same page about. Maybe we'll review this next week uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page. So I'm glad the discussion is happening. Um, so my question is, uh, Abe, to clarify, if I were to... Um, Okay, because because the the bottom line is at some point you take a look at your CAD and you take out the credit card uh, or Bitcoin and you purchase parts, right? And how do you know you're not wasting your money because the part is incorrect? That's 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 where what it boils down to at the end of the day. So we can you know be drawing this forever, but how do I know? Like say say I want to build this or print the parts and all that. How do I know that I'm not wasting time printing or buying wrong parts? And the way to do that would be for me, the way I would do that is I'll take a look at this. I'll maybe like look at perhaps draw all the, the like an exploded part diagram, just put arrows to every single component, get a few pages of that, and then make sure that the, all those arrow points, all the numbers, say one through like 50 parts, are reconciled exactly with the, the master index on a Lyman filament extruder page. So if we go to Lyman filament extruder, at the top we have the master index um, for the extruder and then the spooler, right? So yeah, let's let's wait for it to load up here. Um, so would the correct workflow would be to, as you guys are assembling everything into the CAD file, can I verify that by taking a look at the CAD file and trying to reconcile every single part? And what I'm seeing here, so you've got like 52 parts. Thermal components, 56. Um, so let's say I've got this list of 56 or maybe 57, or let's say 56 because these appear to be empty how many of the 56 can I count in this one and is that 56 all there is or there are minor parts that are missing Abe yes I, I can say something okay please go ahead Mm-hmm. 
some of the electronic parts and I think that all of that, those parts are, are ready in the master index uh -huh. so you can buy okay. them okay so and maybe, mm -hmm. maybe it's, it's important to consider the measurements the, the, the dimensions uh -huh. because possible that some pieces uh, have different dimensions in the real in the real life yeah <laughs> yeah um the way it's designed right now, you, do you think there might be some actual conflicts where certain parts won't fit? Or the model is just inaccurate a little bit, but the parts will still fit? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Um, that sounds sounds pretty good. So definitely this, I mean, this looks like, okay. Do we have a percentage? Like you're saying, like a hundred percent of those fifty-seven parts are in here. Okay, the the parts, as far as I know, tried to keep the links uh, pretty clean, and we've been kind of correcting some stuff. And I know there were some links in the indexes and the uh, build materials, things like that, mm -hmm. that uh, needed updating, and we've kind of done a little bit that was going along. And I think some of the links were too general and. Um, but the, the product links that I tried to put into this stuff were mainly from or as close to uh, Mr. Lyman's bomb, and I tried to keep the same parts, so like the switches and things like that, uh, they would fit. If they were from the same supplier, you know, I think they'll fit in the plastic without modification and things like that, because some of those things, they snap together, um, and, you know, like I know that can be sometimes a little tedious with that kind of stuff, so I tried to get this parts from the same suppliers mm -hmm. hopefully they you know they're the same because you can order stuff and you never know uh sometimes it doesn't come, come out quite right but if you stick with the similar supplier or just the dimensions you know should be right if the switch says it's a half inch by you know inch it should should work but supply perspective i think most of it but it was what mr lyman used um there's mm -hmm. probably some cases where I had to hunt for stuff, and, and of course the bolts and things like that, they're standardized, so... Okay. Um, okay, so if I ask you some specifics here, like for example, like 11, 12, knob for for something and fan bracket, do we have links for those? Purchasing links? Uh, no, the knob, actually I thought that that knob whatever it was, was actually a plastic part. Okay. I don't know, it's not... It's gray. Okay. Yeah, yeah that should be printed. And that's why I put those gray blocks there. I was trying to identify okay. that with a little color coding. I don't know why it doesn't. Should it? Yeah, well, yeah, but I think. Um, I think it's. We should in this table. I think we should put a put a sourcing link and put the link right to our CAD file repository for where that is. So, um, like for example, I can go down straight this list and I can reconcile all the parts say it again Next to the link. oh there's okay the CAD. CAD file link okay yep sorry about that um, those are missing there these are oh yeah so these are th 3d printer that's good I'm seeing that in the gray okay so like here it would be good if we had in this column here we had the 3d Printing links because I'm gonna I'm just gonna start printing this stuff. Uh, if so, I'm gonna take a look at the CAD and uh, see if I can start printing everything. We've got eight by eight inch print bed. What are the largest pieces? Like they're what by like six by six or something? Six by six inch? Do we know? I don't know. Okay. Right, the thing in four pieces, yes, yeah, so we'll take a look at that. But anyway, yeah, this looks pretty complete, so that's really good. Um, and um, 
I'd like to see if we can start coming to closure on this and really do the uh, the winder part. Uh, what I'm going to propose, so let's go back to the meeting uh, to sum up on this part. So we're saying that just about like 100% of what I can point to here, like like those 57 things are represented here. Is that our agreement or there's some things missing? It's not 100%. I'm pretty sure there are uh, some things missing. Uh, okay from the parts that haven't been drawn yet, um, even in the extruder, I think, because I think that those were, I don't get those on, because some people have been a lot faster than others uh, getting the modules done. And the spooler, I guess, is a major thing that needs yeah. more kept down on that too. But the extruder fully done, I think, um, the CAD, probably just some small items. All right. Yeah. Um, well, tell me how you're doing the master master spreadsheet there. Are you um, putting stuff in there as people get them done, or you're doing that proactively and you're just filling that in as like before anything else? Um, I was kind of. I was going to try to rearrange that as we figured out. Um, how better to organize the parts and if we needed to make changes to the way the modules were, that way we could get consistent numbers on things. I had, I had put them in there and numbered it and I figured there would be some changes and I think we talked about that in the last meeting. So um, the kind of done, done much with that this week and then hope to, as parts were pretty much finished out and we finalized them, I figured to go back and kind of, we can edit that to get it consistent because uh, it would be good to have all the, the same and all the documents because I don't think that is currently be done uh, to, sorry uh, to have what on all the documents uh, the numbers, numbers actually be the yeah. same and yeah. consistent throughout yeah that, okay. that makes things difficult if we don't get and, and getting, uh, you know, finalizing where, where all the parts are in each module, hopefully related to how the assembly is done. Yeah. That way we also have maybe kind of an order, uh, an order of assembly. Assume that um, the modules can be assembled kind of individually, and then you can assemble the modules hopefully into the order yeah so what I would propose is that okay so first of all I'm gonna propose a design sprint for Saturday uh, and I'll talk about that later but but I would propose that uh, the a little bit more work on this thing could be just just spending a little bit of time on the connectors I'm assuming the wires and the connectors are not included but they'll they're gonna be critical because you got to make sure that the wires are not loose and stuff like that uh, what I would propose for the wires is that we simply draw up a little symbol, like do like a little block for a, like a terminal connector or something that's got a unique color with a little, like a little line sticking out of it, a little, little cylinder representing a wire. So maybe just something like that as a placeholder for wiring and maybe have them be of the same color for the one point and the second point where they, where they connect. So therefore, looking at this diagram without having to draw the full wiring, you can say, oh, this thing has a wire on it and this other part has a wire on it that's identified because it's the same color. So a little symbol, like a little block with a line that could represent the connector and a wire so that out of this we can make sure that we have accounted for all the connectors so that once we're actually building it, we're just aware that we've got the parts. It's not like... You build it and you find you got to really jerry rig it and stuff, and it's kind of like weak and feeble because we don't have the connectors or whatever, you know, things like that. So I would, I would propose something like that, um, and that's good. And as far as the, um, uh, let's talk about the winder. Yeah, what I propose is um, is a workflow for so so. Uh, tentatively, who who would be able to make it? 
on on Saturday. So basically, all of us knowing knowing FreeCAD, basic literacy in FreeCAD, who can make it Saturday? What I was thinking is we do. Uh, I want to pull like a like a good day on Saturday, and and the thing is, we got to get rolling on a brick press in terms of the, some of the final final uh, de little design changes and generating new CAD files for cutting with our brand new CNC torch table which isn't built yet but it's going to be printed over this week um, I'm going to be working like on that like that will be my main priority getting the torch table up because the event announcement for the 3d printer is already up and that's that's in decent shape so uh, the big focus is going back to the uh, if we go back to the critical path here, right here, these points here, August 25th and August 12th, 3D printer workshop and, and uh, CB press workshop. So a little bit of redesign. Um, build right here, like part cutting is scheduled for the week of like the 24th there. So these these next well yeah like like about one or two weeks about 10 days or so from now part cutting so we gotta we gotta generate some CAD files most of the CAD files for the brick press we have and you can look at if you want to take a look at the brick press uh, take a look at that's the actual machine that was built last year which here what you see is um, without the hopper without automatic controls what we did during the workshop is have people actually explore the brick press themselves by loading it with buckets and using the the manual levers to press bricks and we had a saw mixer on the side there and back there is our tracked crazy tractor that's providing the power to the the brick press um, but the modifications from last year what you see is in case you have been studying the history of this closely what you see here is these guide rods are now no longer connected to the yeah they're connected in a different way uh, the guide rods now are such that they go through one of these top top pieces here through through those top plates here which is different so so this plate means that we have to modify the CAD files for just little modifications uh, but most of the structure is just about identical as as last last version so proposal six hour design sprint I'll be there 12 to 3 on a brick press and 3 to 6 on a filament maker um, who can make that this weekend can anyone make that uh, and before we go there I'm gonna Uh, go to the uh, go back to the role allocation slide. Let's go back to the role allocation. So, so Oliver, do we have Oliver here? Yeah, of course. He's uh, got major progress yeah. going on a on a torch table height controller. But what I'm gonna try to do is anyone else who's loose loose. Uh, join us on a design sprint and anyone else we can allocate uh, put on here and we have uh, a couple of people that are not accounted for and that would be um, for example you know, Alejandro is starting to work on stuff who else is our, in our roster that's missing completely from this And just look at the devlog here Antonio right so this is our current roster we've got Sarah welcome to Sarah got Alejandro and Antonio if I want to get get these fellows right on see if I don't know if they can make the design sprint but but definitely what would want to see if I can allocate some people to the to the CB press the brick press team so we got to add on top of the CNC torch. There's the brick press uh, design. So Alejandro and, and Antonio. Uh, so extruder. So so let's say the design sprint for for Saturday. We've got 
Abe, Israel, Dixon, Will, Roberto, and Io, and um, an extruder. Let's see. I want to see if I can I I can get any more people on the on the brick press work. I could use use some help there. Um, but basically, taking a look at uh, what I need to do for that for the Saturday event is to prepare. Yeah, just communicate with you guys and and see kind of like who we can get to that that event. But also, I would try to say, uh, I'm gonna. Christian, I don't know if you're going to be available. I know you're working on other stuff, but um, I don't know if we could swipe you into into here, into the brick press for some basic CAD work and and uh, just just relatively simple tasks, not too complicated, but kind of like what we're doing with the filament maker. Let's actually call that filament maker. Uh, going through the CAD, making simplifications, making the overall uh, kind of like a bunch of little tasks with, with a lot of different parts that are to be put together into a final design that has to be modified. Um, but let's see. Cedric's kind of disappeared there. Joseph is working hard on other stuff, on team building. But I'm inviting everybody to that day. If you can maybe prepare to save some time on a Saturday to do some of this work. And I don't know who's going to be exactly available. I'm even going to try to talk to jo Joseph into joining this, this little CB press for some basic, basic CAD work. All right. Um, Yeah, so that's that's what I'm going to propose. Okay, so before we go there, let's also discuss a couple of more things. We've covered the kind of the general roadmap. Um, the only thing on a roadmap that's not happening yet is the tractor. That's not happening yet. Really don't have any, any people for that at this point outside of Emmanuel who's willing to join back up. Um, that's kind of a little bit derelict. We're kind of falling behind on that. The brick press, we're going to need to start going. Um, and also, back to the the good old numbers, let's, let's talk a little bit about this again. So we're hovering around the 15, uh, 150 hours per week contribution, around eight or so people out of the team. And actually, we have to report on the progress on that because there's a bunch of people who've actually completed the 120-day, no, rather 120-hour development cycle, which means 12 weeks at 10 hours per week. So actually, we, we got to congratulate, uh, first of all, Jose, who's over 120, and the highest developer, actually, at this point. A little bit of margin above all of Oliver um, but Oliver IO and I believe I think Abe you've got like 120 that's a little under on 120 but Roberto as well so definitely four people four new people that have attained the the first completion of the first cycle so congratulations on that so that's that's Jose, Roberto, uh, Io, and Oliver on that. So that's that's really good. Um, at the same time, there's been like let's see, um, a few people actually had to drop off the team. So actually, Cassie and Chaz uh, couldn't really uh, continue, as well as. Um, Jean Baptiste and Lashlo, they're they're kind of they're not really finding the time to do the dedicated development, but more some ad hoc tasks. So our team is shrinking just a little bit um, on that. Let's see. And then just to to wrap up here, so um, I'm talking to Lex, who's on this call right now. Also, we're we're looking at improving our tracking for the time so we're actually doing a web application where you can log in your hours in a more effective way which would automate some of that process including 
generating a, a basic graph like that so we don't have to do that manually every week and so we can have basic basic tracking of the overall effort as well as the effort by individual people to help us stay on top of that so I'm meeting with Lex um, after this as well um, and on the website we got Jose going at it still the big thing about the website that we want to integrate just as a as a big point of kind of marketing if we if we're gonna do regular workshops on the 3d printer as a start we want to have that that map where people sign up for different places around the world and once there's enough interest expressed in a given location then we actually host a workshop there so that would be a way to engage the whole world like not like oh we just have this workshop at factory farm or in the United States the idea is we can take this anywhere as long as there are people to support a full workshop and that that we can get through our website uh, so we really got to upgrade our website to be able to do that and since we use WordPress and MediaWiki those are our two main tools uh, we want to have that in WordPress as a, as a platform that we can use and that anybody else trying to run these workshops can also use just like the local food nodes which I showed which I uh, talked about in the some of the recent posts on Facebook local food nodes where people basically sign up for local local delivery spots of local food like local local food operations this could be kind of like that where wherever there's a location that that can sustain a workshop we can we can host things there so in fact, we talked about um, when I talked to so actually talking to Victor. We, if you saw that by any chance, talked about the idea of using their map functionality to get get that kind of subscription to a, to a particular location, have that visualized nicely on a map. Uh, Jose, you want to yeah, add that, add something? Yeah, yeah. The thing I did uh, the research uh, for the listify thing uh, is the, the, the one that I found that was more uh, suitable in the future mm -hmm. because it's like a, it's like an Airbnb uh, kind of listing where you relate uh, location to uh, people you know yeah uh, but we have to explore more how to uh, really uh, Customize it for our purpose. Because yeah. The idea to uh, now is is uh, is customized for entities like, for instance, uh, houses or people that host a house, and then you can see them on the map. But uh, the idea is to customize that to people or communities, something like that. You know. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. That, that's a, that's an ideal uh, scenario. Yeah. For now, it's a very simple thing. I, I don't know. I can show you what I have uh, quickly. Yeah. Yeah. You can share. Your, yeah. Go ahead. Share your screen real quick. Yeah. Just, uh, you see it now? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what what I have now is. Uh,
about a really simple one and a model again to uh, the idea would be to from here directly go to the the sheet the Google forms that you have to uh, engage people to get people to subscribe yeah keep it really simple and uh, test the idea and then be more complex and then I would like to also I have uh, this uh, well, I made a, a, a page for the for the printer with the 3D model. Now it's on Sketchfab. But the idea was to give a quick overview of the design principles, and uh, I, it would be nice to have like a package, a like zip file, or something that you can download. Uh, with all the models, you know, something similar to what the the Dave Hagen from Pressure Plastic has. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. That's it for now. That's what what I got so far. Yeah. Uh, very nice. Is that um, you're just coding it up without WordPress? This is just your own coding. Uh, I first started doing that, but then I decided to really customize uh, a simple theme uh, and just see how far I could go with a simple solution, you know? Sim you're talking about not WordPress, just custom? Oh, this is WordPress, this is WordPress. Okay. It's a theme. It's a, it's a 2017 theme. Okay. How do we, uh, how do I get to, um, do you have a repo where we can actually... Uh, view it, install it, so I can, like, we can start testing it on our server. Yeah, the thing is that this, uh, this one is actually you don't have to do that much. You just have to copy the the things I would have to make a a, a repository for the custom pages that I made for all the custom uh, HTML, which is not, uh, yeah, that's not so complicated. And then you can say, okay, put it here, put it there. So it shouldn't be a problem. But uh, yeah. So right now, this is this is on WordPress. Yeah, this is for WordPress. Yeah, it's just a WordPress thing. The 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 basic theme uh, uh, 2017. You know, when you go to download WordPress, the most simple okay. thing that you get is this one. Yeah. Can you uh, let's see? Can you did you document that or? Can you put a link to that theme and and then link to your code, to your website code? Because I know you've had okay. a, yeah. Just please yeah. put that on because I, I saw the older stuff where which wasn't WordPress and I saw that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we gotta talk about yeah. Let's talk about some of the structure and stuff like that. We can continue working yeah. on that. That's pretty good. Thank you. Um, excellent. So. Uh, next thing is uh, maybe uh, let's get a breath of inspiration from Oliver. Do you have any for this week on Torch Table updates? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh -huh. um, yeah, not so much spectacular stuff. Um, um, uh, I'm just in the deep middle of programming the new firmware where for the new board, for the new PCB board, where I bring everything together. Uh, what we have seen the last week, that was still the movements were externally controlled by an, another thing, but mm -hmm. uh, I've now implemented in the firmware that it can control by itself um, the TB6600 driver. Okay. And also the turning knob, yeah. where there was a little sad thing, <laughs> what I've discovered, um, that is um, the two data lines of the, of the uh, jog wheel are uh, connected to analog port um, 6 and 7 on the Arduino Nano. And normally it's no problem to use analog ports on Arduino as digital I.O. ports. But in this special case, um, it is the case that the, uh, the A6 and A7 only work as analog ports. You cannot use them for digital input. Normally, what I found out the hard way. 
Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, there is a workaround. I, I have a found a software workaround where it's simply uh, read um, analogous and then changed to digital. Or otherwise, one could simply solder some wires. But so far, it seems to work uh, the soft, with the software trick. And um, um, but this may be a point if we will ever do a second version of this PCB, then this is one of the little things what could be fixed or or, or better made. Um, Yeah, and then secondly, I'm um, uh, recently uh, started to do the calibration thing what I had in mind last week. And yeah, I'm I'm now on that. And uh, if that works, then the, the next thing is to to implement into the film where that it can balance itself on a certain level. So that's that's my where I'm at the moment. I just stopped programming to join you here. And yeah. So far, no pictures today. Right. Do you have a um, link to a repo where you're keeping your code or? Um, yeah, I document this on the on the um, what's the word. Uh, uh, on, on, on the wiki page for the for the um, uh, for the torch height controller thing, but um, as a, as a, there is a link towards the GitHub repository where everything is. But at the moment, there is uh, only the codes for the manual stuff because I still have to completely do uh, the documentation for the new PCB version on that page. But um, I, 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 I didn't that yet so far. I'm at the moment in the middle of the development, and as soon as there's something working, then I mm-hmm. have to clean up the code a little bit, and then it will also add it to the GitHub repository of this project. Uh, what's the wiki page where you're documenting the code? I don't um, see it on your log. You, yeah, you find it from my log. Um, let me see. I see links to the old CNC torch table work. Um, yeah. On top. Uh, it's a little bit deeper. I think I have... Ah, uh, here it is. I think I have to put it... To move it a little bit. But so far here comes the link. You talk, it's the CNC torch table Z height control, is it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. But there is only so far the stuff from the manual height controller. That's I've left out there one space where I add all the stuff from, from the uh, new PCB controller and there I put it there but I mentioned that page because there is also a link to the GitHub repository where the code is uh, and, and all design files are uh, placed. Okay. It's, it's hiding way at the bottom there. All right. Yeah. I've just put that for your reference working on code. You're just doing a code for both auto or just for the manual knob? I'm sorry, can you repeat? You're doing the code for the automatic version or for the the manual control version? Yeah, that's what I mean with the firmware for the new PCB. That means the code firmware for code for the automatic, automatic. version. Yeah. The, the code for the manual version or uh, everything what concerns the manual uh, conversion, all sources are already placed onto the GitHub files. And concerning the automated version, I'm just working on that. And uh, if something run and is cleaned up, then I put it also to the GitHub site, and I will also then uh, fill in the, the the wiki page. Okay. So doing the documentation stuff, but it, it's it's meaningless if I'm doing it now because everything is still. Uh, under undergoing development and still changing and moving and so on. So I'm doing it afterwards as soon as I've reached certain milestones. Uh, yeah, so so you've got the... Let me sh- uh, share my screen here. So on the torch height control here, so you've document you've got the working firmware for the, the manual right here. Yeah. And, exactly. Right. Thank you. And then 
for the automatic isn't the isn't the workflow supposed to be that you throw it up to the github and then update versions or you, i mean how's i don't use github so much how is it yeah, supposed as, to work as soon as, as soon as i have something stable that then then i'm doing that immediately i mean the github is uh, especially for versioning and so on so i can do that but uh, as i'm saying i'm just in the middle of programming yeah. and uh, it makes no sense i have to clean up the code a little bit because uh, i i want to make it that anybody has a chance to get into it yeah yeah so that must be done before and before i can do that then something must be running what is at the moment my main concern or yeah what I'm mm -hmm. my attention. okay thank you so yeah, maybe what what uh, is interesting for your timeline and so on mm -hmm. i mean i have now tested so far the periphery and everything seems to work. Ah, one thing I haven't yet tested so far and implemented that is the end stop, but I think that will be no big problem. Uh, but what I wanted to say is, um, if if I have the, the moving stuff, meaning the, the the calibration thing, and that the thing can balance itself, then uh, I can send you uh, the board immediately forward you. If you if you send me your postal uh, address, then yeah. I can put it on the way. Okay. I mean, from here so far, everything seems to work, and um, all other stuff, yeah, can can be can be is is is, is, is firmware stuff and can be submitted by internet. Right. Does the manual code itself have end stops built into it, or or it's just end stopless? Uh, Sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, the system. manual code does that have does that have end stops in it or no? And and what? End, ah, end stops. End stops? In it. No, not yet. I, I I haven't paid much attention to the end stops at right. the moment because uh, right. you can also do it manually. But uh, yeah. later on, I will add that it's a kind of luxurious feature. I think, oh, I, I, in my imagination, it would be similar like the z and stop thing from a 3d printer you can even put a paper sheet onto it if you if you calibrate that end stop height and then uh, this is what i'm at the moment also working so the the, the flow how the sh thing should start i think it yeah. should start and then check the the nearest point on it that's the, the, the homing or zero position which is then given by the end stop, meaning it moves downward and until it gets stops. So, and then the calibration starts. This is the zero point, and then it <clears throat> and then it moves three centimeters upwards, and that's the the maximum point or one given maximum point. And between that, we have a range of three centimeters, and then I move it downward to the position which you or which the user defines before let's say 10 10 millimeters or last time we said five millimeters I'm I'm ch uh, checking different ranges that can be 5 10 15 millimeters so it goes then down and then from that point it will run in a loop where it um, uh, measures uh, the, the height and if there is a um, uh, uh, now, abweichung, um, a difference to that value, then it should balance it towards the value and move the carriage to an appropriate height. But that is where I'm actually, uh, where I'm recently, uh, yeah, programming and testing and making, where I'm in the middle of. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Yeah. Sounds good, sounds good, keep going. Uh -huh. I'm doing my best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, excellent, excellent. Okay, so that's um, that's basically. I think that covers uh, most of the what we wanted to cover today. Let's see what else. So, see any questions or comments? Color codes for the FreeCAD drawings. Yeah, we should do. We should declare a color code. So what's so printed parts? Let's talk about the because it's relevant for our CAD. Can we make printed parts something like that nice green color, or or do we want to? If we or do you want to stick with this nice purple for the printed parts? I like the purple. That's pretty nice. What do we do? 
we can declare any convention we like. Let's let's declare it. Um, green or uh, purple or green. Uh, let's we can do purple for now. So let's continue see if that works. Um, printable parts. Off shelf. Blue, because it's typically a lot of it is metal. Um, bolts are yellow. Printable parts red, green, and yellow. If that's a good working scheme, I I don't know. But if we have this already. Does that sound good? Purple, blue, yellow, or, or red, green, and yellow? Red, green, and yellow. Th those are nice, all nice primary colors there. Um, red, green, and yellow. We gotta have some blue. Purple, blue, and yellow. Let's try purple, blue, and yellow for now. Um, or, does that work, or? Hmm. See, let's look at question two. Is it an idea to make a one millimeter pocket of the 3D printed parts containing text of the link to the part on the wiki? That would be a nice idea. Um, would that make the part much heavier? Possibly yes, if we're talking about the full file. But then maybe we can have one. Yeah, I mean, how does it work in practice? Because I know if you, if you have text, I mean, that's going to start adding up that memory. It's like a text would be a polygon. Unless that's not how it works, so we should try that, and maybe try try a printed part that's got identification on it that's indented one millimeter pockets. That'll be good. And for some parts that are too small, you can't really fit that text on there probably. So you can label some and maybe not not others. But that's a good idea. I do like that. Um, okay. I think that. That's kind of um, what we have here. Let's then go back to the final question of who can join us this Saturday. Is anyone available? Because the idea with a CEB press is whatever we get to... I mean, we kind of have like the next 10 days to make the new CAD files before we cut them using our own torch table so that should be up and running the the contingency is if for some reason we're not able to get this torch table up and running I'm gonna just take those parts to the fab shop by uh, August 7 that would leave us like two or three weeks for part cutting but if this part cutting doesn't work that's with our own torch table then we're gonna have to go to a backup plan of, of outsource that to a local fab shop but the point is we only have a little bit of time here to get there like a week really um, 10 days or so before our cutoff is there for for cutting all our parts once we have the torch table working the cutting is only gonna take like you know like a few good hours so the key is to get that torch table going if we've got the files work you know files available we gotta have the files so the latest latest p possible cutoff on that would be about August 7 like say we're fumbling with the torch table and uh, we can't get it to work or something like that um, that would leave us until August 7 uh, as the final cutoff where where we we would have to get all the CAD files and, and DXF files for cutting uh, by August 7th. So that, if it's about the 18th right now, uh, if we look at the calendar, that's like one, two, almost three weeks. But it's definitely, we definitely have two weeks. with August 7 cutoff. Okay. 
that's why I'm proposing the just for reference here the Saturday's design sprint so with that said who can make it um, anybody so the process for that would be that like why we want to set apart that time the biggest part of that is that we set up our that time or actually um, are setting that time in our calendar so saying okay we're actually gonna work at that time together and the coordination there is that before that event happens we've got a work plan of certain items so so something like an index of all the parts that have to be done kind of like our role division normal role division kind of um, diagrams where we get very specific about what each person is gonna do but basically it would be to to redraw some of the files from the existing CAD if you go to the uh, CB press genealogy page for example you can go to the last version which is version 16.09 which is like the tenth or so different brick press we've built in house, but the 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 CAD is here. You can download the source right on top, and that that is not completely done because the the new upgrades, like with a slight modification I mentioned, is not documented yet. So we're gonna have to basically take several parts. There's like maybe. Uh, five or so files that we're gonna need to modify like individual parts so if I if I double click on that I'll show you where where we are in a CB press so it would be take the part in FreeCAD allocate it to the people that show up and make some of the modifications and the modifications are gonna be made from measurements like I can what I'll do is I'll actually take some pictures I'll take a few pictures of the machine that's currently out there because this thing that you saw here, it's actually out there in the same place in the field as we left it last year. So what I'll do is I'll take a few of the pictures of those parts where the basically the the long rods, which are the guide rods for the drawer. I'll take a few pictures of how that looks because we're going to have to modify like this one piece here and then draw up the detail of the drawer with these this new holding mechanism so just a little bit of detail where what I'll do is I'll present a document with all the different dimensions uh, so basically take take some detailed pictures and take a tape tape measure out there and draw out all the dimensions and from that there's gonna be several parts that we're gonna modify to probably like five maybe as many as ten but but five to ten parts that we wanna modify and then extract the DXF file uh, so from FreeCAD you can uh, get something like a sketch or I don't know how we take DXFs out of FreeCAD that's one thing we have to look into but I think there's a way that um, I mean do we have export to to DXF in FreeCAD okay so if you look at this so that's the brick press from how it stood last year so um, what we're talking about is yeah like those holes in there that's the modification right there that's where the the guide bars go through but if you see here the drawer is not modified uh, let me see if I can uh, flip this thing around yeah so the design is quite complete here but if you look at the detail of the drawer what you see here this is the drawer and in our picture that's the drawer there the the CAD does not have that that assembly there because in this CAD the drawer guides were still actually on well this is updated for the drawer guides are removed and they're put as placeholders but they're not actually CADed up here so we're gonna have to cat up like take this piece here modify it take take a few of the critical pieces and modify them 
to make it happen. And a team, why would the team effort matter? Well, because right there we can get it done. In three hours we should be able to, to take the, uh, draw up the, some of the parts and generate DXF files. So if you go to, um, I guess for file export, do we have an export to DXF? I hope we do. At least it's, sh let's see, does it show up? Uh, so this is new. We've not used FreeCAD before to export to to CAM files, computer-aided manufacturing. Here it does say Autodesk DS DXF, and I'm not sure if that's... Oh yeah, this is drawing two-dimensional DXF. So probably using just a simple export from FreeCAD, uh, we can probably do it. And I can try that right now. Say I clicked on that. I clicked on that there. Let's see what export does if I export to DXF. Uh, let's see if anything visible happens. DXF. So somewhere maybe on my desktop it might have showed up. I don't see it. I have to figure it out. But we know that there's workflows for that in FreeCAD because there's also a toolpath module that I know Yorick, one of the developers, has been developing. And you have to download that. But it's, it's called the toolpath module where it allows you to generate cutting files for CNC machines. And we might want to look into that or just do a simple DXF export. Because the workflow for us for the CNC torch table is going to be we're going to have to generate G code for whatever file we have so we're going to have to to use some form of DXF to G code converter and we have to look into what what tool toolpath oh sorry what workflow that would look like yeah but basically that's the that's the assignment for Saturday so let's um let's get the tentative interest on that so so I'm going to put a little category here called Design Sprint. And let's attach some names. So that's going to be hot, for, hot and red for this Saturday. So we've got Roberto. Let's see, did Dixon say yes? Or let's see, who, who else we got here? Yeah, we do. We do have the dimensions clearly specified. What I need to do, I mean, that's that. That is not document. That's why I need to go out there to take pictures with a tape measure and draw that all up. So I can get that maybe in the next um, next couple of days or so. I'll get that up and running. Um, so <clears throat> we've got Roberto. Uh, Abe, are you around that time or no? And I'm going to ask anybody else. Christian, as well as Oliver. Can any of you guys make it? Because that would be a thing we can get everybody's help on. We basically want to, I mean, we've got like a couple of weeks to do it. we got to just do it and be done with it. So yes for Abe. Um, what about the wiki and cluster? Right, we got to do it, but when we talk about immediate priority right now, uh, so Christian, to answer that question, in the meantime, as, as I get the immediate cluster running, what I suggest is we just use a laptop, and then we just put a bunch of USB ports to that just from a laptop. That's the initial low way to do it without being advanced. Um, what I suggest, Christian, also is that we get you the parts and you do that, because my time is really tight on that. So let's talk about getting you the parts while you wait for that. Um, while you wait for the parts, maybe you can participate on this Saturday if you can. It would mean that we have to do basic sketches in FreeCAD and uh, extrude them to, to parts, which is pretty entry-level work. I know everybody who passed the FreeCAD exam pretty much can do that uh, or can pick up on that with, with a, just a tiny bit of practice. Um, Christian, would that make you available this Saturday or, or not really? We do want to continue on that, but we can, um, yeah, so so let's see what we can do. So what we'll do is that, um, 
I mean the six hours would be three and three what I want to do is um, do three hours on a brick press and then do three hours on the extruder because I, I really want to go through the entire extruder design we can just nail out what parts are missing maybe we could draw the wires like like I mentioned working off the main extruder part so that this weekend we just nail and finish the extruder so I can actually like confidently get the parts and build it and then the week after I would I would like to propose the Saturday after that that we just nail the filament winder part so that would be the preferred way to do it um, right so I'm gonna swipe Christian onto that uh, print cluster is so Christian is actually on a print cluster that that will still do but but Christian let's what I'd like you to do is email me exactly the part list that you have and we'll get it for you just so we can order it through whatever through ger the German Amazon or whatever you got <laughs> and I'm gonna get Alejandro and Antonio going on this as well see if they can join us I'm not sure if they can but I'm gonna put them down down there anyway and see if they're available and Joseph I'm gonna try to coerce him to appearing on Saturday as well <laughs> um, and Cedric I don't know if he's gonna be around but I'm gonna try to ask Cedric um, let's see Oliver what are you doing this Saturday Nope. Okay. But as far as who we do have, let's take a look at that. Does that... Um, that'll be... There's six people there if they can... Two, four, six right now. If they can make it. And then uh, we still have to determine if Io could do it. If um, Israel could do it. and possibly if Cedric so I'll email them or we can follow up with them I'm gonna put them in light um, maybe they can do it okay so so essentially for the design sprint just to get your mind around it I'm gonna take on the CB press I'm gonna take pictures of the modified parts we're gonna cut them up and draw cam files and generate ready-to-go cam files that we can put straight on a CNC torch table so that's a very practical goal um, the thing is we have DXF files for like every single thing here any flat including the grate they're all CNC cut like for example you see here for these arms they're two, two flats welded together which means that and like all these parts like the frame the angles these parts this is all CNC cut the drawer is CNC cut from flats it's a three-dimensional structure but it's simply made from parts being cut out of flat steel which is half inch most of the machine is half inch there's a few pieces that are one eighth inch which are like the, this table here and so forth and a cover that I hid um, and the hopper is also CNC cut and it's made out of 1 8 inch but everything else is half inch pretty much mostly like like these bars are once again cut the holes because because the thing is with a CNC you you get to put in all the holes in the right places so that everything is uh, fits together perfectly which means that you can build a machine like that in a single day just from the all the CNC cut parts Otherwise, if you're doing uh, this by taking, say, angles and U-channel, which is what we did for the initial version, it's going to take you a week to do it. So you can you can save from a week of build to a day, one day of build, and that's what we do for extreme manufacturing. Now, the tubes, we don't cut those. Those are cut on 
say a cutoff saw or a band saw it's not that easy to cut out of tubes while it's easy to take a like a two by three meter sheet of steel and just cut everything from it so that's the way the brick press currently is made and I'm gonna take those measurements so we can generate some of the new updated parts and then on a, on a filament extruder what we'll do uh, to get your mind ready for that we're gonna take the existing file that we have so so let me let me open up that file again uh, filament extruder assembly what we'll do the work the good workflow would be to, to add any little missing details into that CAD file reconcile it with the master index and after we reconcile it with the master index we put all the parts together then then we we put all the ordering and printing links into the master index so that every single part is there and that means that when we build it here we can simply get the parts and we don't have we're not looking around for little parts or trying to fumble around it's, it's going to be a much more effective build to make that happen uh, let's see do we have this did that show up Yeah, so the filament extruder assembly will, like for example, for like some of the wires, let's say, we can do like for example for the switch, we might do like a little stub, little maybe a little cylinder with another cylinder coming out its side to represent a wire. So wherever that wire connects to, let's say, we can uh, draw another corresponding same color piece elsewhere where it connects, such that we make sure we've got all the little missing m missing things like. You know, maybe a little wire symbol for the uh, the heater band and everything else that's that's wired up. We should at least represent it within um, this complete drawing. So that'll be the Saturday's work. Spend three hours on putting in all the little little details so that we're literally ready to build it, and then we can understand. Okay, this is you know, uh, say when I click on this file here, I can go to the master index, and the master index will have the actual 3D printing file directly linked so that I can check off that yes I've got that I can build this whole thing so that, that's kind of the basic workflow uh, I'm gonna prepare a, a working document for that design sprint so that when we join that we can once again go over the the procedure with uh, roll division to separate uh, the rolls out to whoever appears for that but we're gonna have at least one two three like Christian maybe if you can appear at the early part of that that m means at noon time so so that time was we said 12 noon to 6 p.m. Um, on that Saturday that CST time we'll do the hangout just like we're doing now and what I'll do also is we have a list of design sprinters from um, when we used to do design sprints but before we weren't on FreeCAD so so whoever on our official design sprint list exists let me just show you the link uh, but there's a design sprints page on the wiki where there's a spins design sprints where uh, there's a whole we have a database basically this uh, at this culturing culturing survey uh, so basically there's the there's a list that this is how we we worked on it before so in this we have a database of like 200 or 300 people that participated in design sprints and uh, we'll, we can email them to see if anyone else can participate but the requirement there is they have to know FreeCAD so that's a motivation for some more people to learn freak and join on a very practical task there might be a few people we might pick up still from that list okay um, that will wrap up for for right now so thank you all for participating and uh, any last minute questions here going back Yeah. 
Uh, so, yeah. Yep. Okay. I think I think this is pretty good. So, so that that's it for the meeting. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again next time, Tuesday, 1 p.m. CST, next week. Thank you.